So this here's a video on how to paint an Emperor's Children Chaos Lord. So this Chaos Lord has a jump pack as well as dual lightning claws. As you can see, he's made out of the Harkin World Claimer model. And then we had swapped the spear arm for another lightning claw. Uh, there is a video on the channel showing the kit bash that we did for that, just to how we built it up, uh, which you can probably find a link in the bottom. So if you like the way he looks and you think he looks exciting, uh, feel free to stay tuned and we'll show you how we painted him. And otherwise than that, please feel free to leave a like or a comment. Stay tuned for the painting video. And if you really feel up to it, subscribe to the channel. And otherwise than that, we will see you in a few minutes. So in this video, we're going to paint ourselves a Chaos Lord with Jump Pack. And what we're going to use is we're going to use the Harkan, Harkanen World Claimer model. We've swapped out one of his arms, the one with the spear, and added a second set of lightning claws because what we want to use is the rapacious talons or the rapacious talons from the the new um, Psychic Awakening book, which is a Slanesh uh, demon weapon. Um, so what we're going to use is this model as our Chaos Lord, and he's going to buff all our other noise marines. So we're going to paint him up as an Emperor's Children model. So the first thing we did with him is we did prime him with Chaos Black spray paint. As you get to see right there. So that just primed him dark. And that way that'll fill in most of the grooves and things as we lay our overlay colors. We'll have a, a black in all of the crevices which will make the model look a little bit better. So the first thing we're going to do is add our purple armor. And for that, we're going to start with a base color of Nagaroth Knight. And we're going to do all of the armor pieces um, on both legs, arms. We're also going to do the jetpack here as well. And then we're going to do the up to the lightning claws, except the claws themselves. We'll leave the head open because it is an uncovered head. Um, although we'll uh, deal with some of the details there later. So we'll do most of those in Nagaroth Knight now, and we'll meet back here in a few minutes when we've got that topped up. So this is our model now that we finished with the Nagaroth Knight. And as you can see, <clears throat> or as you can kind of see, that there's definitely a purple tinge over the black to the area here, as well as the armor and the legs and the arms, which, um, which will give us our base color for purple. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a layer of Xerius purple over the top of that. And that should lighten it up a little bit. So mostly it's going to be a dry brush, just lightly brushed over all of the surfaces we, that we based with the Nagaroth Knight. So we'll do that now and we'll meet back here in a few minutes. So this is our model after we finish with the Xerxes purple. And as you can see, it's a lot brighter than it was a few minutes ago. So what we're going to do now is do another highlight layer, but this time use a little bit of Gene Stealer Purple, which is a little bit lighter still. So what we're going to do is dry brush that till it's almost nothing left on the, on the, on the brush, and then just highlight over the highlights, the, the, the raised areas, just to add a little bit more of a highlight and just to bring out some more of that purple before we move on to a different color. So we'll do that now and we'll meet back here in a moment. So this is our model after the Gene Stealer Purple. And as you can see, we've got a nice two-tone level here, as well as a nice highlight layer on the top, and a nice downwards glow for most of the purple shade that is there now. So for our next color, what we're going to do is take Retributor Armor as a base, and we're going to start going all along the trim of all of the armor, all of the um, designs, all of the iconography, the, the back posts over here, as well as the trim along the legs. So we're going to go over all that trim with gold, uh, with Retributor Armor, and we'll meet back here in a few minutes using a more detailed brush than we did before, because now we actually have to keep track of the lines, whereas with the purple, we sort of slathered it everywhere. So we'll do that now and meet back here in a moment. So this is our model now that we finished with the Retributor Armor. 
And as you can see, we've done lots of the gold trim. We've done the top of the jetpack here, as well as the back of the jetpack here, as well as the um, tailbone sort of armor there, the shins, the detail on the gloves, and then the front uh, um, grill as well. So for our next color, what we'll do is most of the jet um, engines here, as well as all of the tubes and the aerator, and then all of the tubes on the stomach, and then all of the chains hanging from the back, all of the uh, engine parts that are in the jetpack. And we're going to do all of that with lead belcher base. So we'll do that now, and we'll meet back here again once that's finished. So here's our model now that we finished with our metallics, and as you can see, we did the jet burners as well as all of the tubing around the head and the chest. We did the pipes going into the stomach area here, and then on the back we did the back vents as well as this tube here and some of this um, some of this wiring that's here as well. So we left the claws alone because we're going to deal with those at, um, at a later time, and then we did some of the uh, me me mechanisms here that are holding them in place. I think what we're going to do instead is the face first um, and get that finished because if we paint over the metal after the metal's all done, then we it'll be much more complicated to repair. So we'll do the face first and the face is going to go a base color of Rackarth Flesh and as well as the face. That's the same thing that the skulls are going to get, as well as all the skulls on the back of the um, of the jetpacks here as well. So the face and all of the skulls are all going to get a base coat of Rackard flesh, as well as this shoulder pad, which is full of skulls as well. So we'll do that one there as well in Rackard flesh. So we'll do all those, and we'll meet back here in just a few minutes. So this is our model now that we finished with the Rackarth flesh and what we did was the head over here as well as that shoulder pad we had been talking about as well as the sets of skulls trailing behind and the ones up on the trophy rack above. So we're about ready for shading now and what we're going to do is two different shades here. The face is going to get some Reeklin flesh shade. And the skulls are all going to get some seraphim sepia. So we're going to put both of those on now. And then we'll meet back here. So the Reeklin flesh shade will very lightly go over the face. Just like so. And the seraphim sepia will go over all those skulls. Just like so. So we'll finish the model. We'll meet back here in a few more minutes. So now that the Reekland flesh shade we put on the head is dry, what we're going to do is start bringing highlights on that particular spot. So the first thing we're going to do is take that Rackarth flesh that we used before, and we're going to put a dry brush layer of that right over the top of that head again.
just like that. So I'll allow that to dry and then we'll move on from there to the next layer. So now that the rack of flesh is dry, what we're going to do is one more highlight layer on the face with Pallid Witch Flesh. And since that's a very, very light color, we're not going to need very much of it at all. Just like that there. <clears throat> so that finishes off her face. And now we can move on to dealing with the skulls. So now that we're going to move on to the skulls, we're going to do a dry brush of Screaming Skull right over the, the skulls trailing from the behind there. Just like so. As you can see, <clears throat> that gives us a nice texture on those skulls. We'll do the same for the ones on the trophy rack and the shoulder pad, and we'll meet back here in a few moments. So now that we're finished with the face and skulls, we're gonna start washing and shading the metallics. And we're just going to do the gold and the metal. We're not going to touch any of the purple. And what we're going to do with all of that is we're going to shade them with Newell Oil. Because I'd like them both dark. And then I'll bring them back out with much lighter colors. So we're going to shade that now. And we'll meet back here in a few minutes once it's all done. So this is our model now that the Newell Oil has dried. And what we ended up doing while we were waiting is we did the decorative base because um, we had some time to kill. So if you're curious what went into that, the Space Marine had a base coat of Cantor Blue, followed by a dry brush of Cogar Blue, and then the trim was the same Retributor armor we've done earlier, as well as the Aguila. And then the base itself was done with Sandry Dust. And that gun is sort of where we are there now. So now that we're finished with the metallics and all the shade is dry, we're going to add a highlight layer to both the silver and the and the gold. And so what we're going to do is a little bit of iron breaker over the uh, metallic silver. And we're going to do a little bit of liberator gold over all of the gold parts. And we'll meet back here afterwards, but that'll bring out the highlights and then we'll almost be finished our model. So we'll finish that up and we'll meet back here in a few moments. So this is our model now that we finished both metallic highlights, the, the um, Iron Breaker as well as the Liberator Gold. And as you can see, we've lit up the model quite nicely. You can see on the knee pads here how it, they have a much, much more noticeable sheen as well as the spikes on the back and the uh, the trophy racks. So we finished all of that. So now we've only got two parts left. We've got the loincloth here as well as the power claws. So I think first thing we're going to do is the power claws um, because they're the more complicated of the two. So we're going to do those right now. So the first color we're going to use on our lightning claws is going to be uh, just a basic light blue color. So our first choice is going to be Calgar Blue, but there are lots of other choices you could use. We're going to use those to put the base color down. And as you can see right here, we're just going to paint. The entire claw this nice blue color. So we'll do this for the rest of them and we'll be right back. So this is our model now that we finished with the Calgar Blue and as you can see each claw is nice and bright and colored. So what we're going to do now is add a little bit of a shade color. So it's not a shade paint, it's a shade uh, color and we're going to use a little bit of Cantor Blue. 
So what we're going to do with that, we're going to keep it nice and watery, is we're going to put it at the base of the claws, like so, and so, and so, and so. And then we're going to dry our brush. And then we're just going to feather that down the shaft of the claw. Giving us a little bit of depth there, see? So we'll probably do another layer of that just to make it a little darker because we're going to want dark on the beginning, fading off into lighter as we go. Now, if you go too far with your Cantor Blue, you can always dry brush on some of that Calgar Blue on the end again, because you can build the gradient either light to dark or dark to light. But as you can see, we've definitely got our gradient right here. You can see how it's light moving into dark, same as on this side here. So we'll let that dry for a few minutes and then we'll meet back again. So now that we've finished that, we're going to move on to our next color. And we're going to use Lothurn Blue. But what you want is just a very, very bright and light colored blue. And we're going to do an edge highlight with that. all up the edge of the claw here. Just like so. Nice and bright there. So we're going to do that for each of the claws on the outside and maybe possibly on the inside depending how pointy they are and we'll meet back here in a few minutes once that's done. So here we finish with our Lothran Blue Edge Highlight. You can't quite see it against the white background but if I put my hand in the way you can see how the edges are done and then same as on that one there. See how our edge highlight goes all along the entire length of the claw. And then the same thing with this one over here. And they go right back along the whole length. So now that we've finished with the Lothran Blue, we're ready to move on to our last color. Our last color, what we're going to do is another edge highlight. But in this case, we're just going to go right around just the, the bottom touch of the fingers. And we're going to do that with some Blue Horror which is considerably brighter than the Lothran Blue. And our plan is to make the edge of it glow. We're just going to take that little tiny bit of Blue Horror and just run it right along the very edge here, the lower half. And it seems really bright, but it will dry a little bit dimmer. So with our lightning claws finished, our model is nearly complete. The only thing we're missing now is the um, loincloth here. So what we're going to do with that is we want it to be white. And white is a tricky color to paint. So what we're going to do is start with a darker layer and then sort of add highlights till we get to the final color we want. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint a base color of Celestra Gray and we're going to put that all over the uh, loincloth tabard here and we'll meet back here up here when that's finished. So this is our model now that we finished with the loincloth doing it with the Celestra Gray and as you can see a lot of the detail has shown up so now what we're going to do is add a highlight layer over the top of the high points there and we're going to do that with Ulthuan Gray, which is a little bit lighter. So we're just going to dry brush that right over these points. And that'll leave the Celestra Gray deepen inside. 
and that should give us just about enough shadow as we need for for this cloth so we'll do that right now we'll meet back here in a few minutes so here we have us after we've added the Uthawin gray and as you can see we've definitely got a little bit of ridges and a little bit of darkness there um, so what we do is one more tiny highlight the highest points we're going to do it with white scar which is exceptionally bright so we're only going to put a tiny little bit of it we're just going to dry brush that right over the lightest spots of all just like that we'll make it a little bit brighter and we'll meet back here in a moment so that is the end of our white highlight and pretty much the end of our model. We're going to clear coat them. We'll probably clean up the base a little bit more here and we'll be back in a moment with the final product. So this is the final model and as you can see we've uh, flocked the base with sand and then we've also clear coated them. The only other thing that's uh, not quite as uh, apparent is we put a little dab of Newell oil in inside of each eye just to add a little bit of depth there and to give it a little bit of uh, detail. So that pretty much finishes our, uh, our model. So if you found this video was helpful, uh, please feel free to leave a like and a comment. If you found the, uh, the channel itself to be useful, please feel free to subscribe. And after that, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you stayed this long, that's great. And we will see you at our next painting video. Um, thanks a lot. You guys have a great time and enjoy your models.